At this point, we've got um, this button that uh, is reacting. When you click on it, the console should tell you you've you've clicked on it. It's running. Well, what needs to happen is, as I've said, um, this document, the index HTML, needs to connect to the JSON data to the database. Pull a network out of here and then display this information on screen in a nice readable format. Right now it's just data, it's kind of raw. It's still readable, but you wouldn't really put this data out there on screen to the user. You'd want to display the picture, not a, not a link to the picture, you want to display the picture. So uh, we're going to back up one, one thing here. We've done L button pick and L div show. We've made these objects that um, relate to creating the objects in the HTML area. We're going to create another object. So we'll do var. Um, we'll call this, let's call this data. This is the um, object that is going to hold the data that we pull out of the database. We'll say data <coughs> equals new XML, capital letters here, capital XML, capital H, but then lowercase ttp, capital R request, parentheses. So we can write a comment here and we'll say JS object, JavaScript object that will hold the data we get from connecting to the db.json database. So we had new pouch db previously when we're creating a new database in pouch. Here we're saying new XML HTTP request. We're creating an object that will allow us to connect to the, um, the data. I think actually it will be more obvious if we call it data connection. Long name, but this object represents our data connection. Uh, we're going to connect from the HTML file to the JSON file. This is going to be our, our way to do it. We are uh, going to be able to request a connection. Inside the function, we're going to start the process to connect. Up here, this is the object that will allow us to connect. But in the actual function, we start the connection. Every time we press the button, connect to the database, grab a new network, show it on screen. So we'll say data connection dot open. We're going <clears> to <throat> open a connection between our current file and the JSON file. In quotes, we'll say get. I'll explain these items in a moment, but let's just write this, comma, quotes, db.json, comma, true. Basically what this is, set up a connection to the db file using the get is it a protocol or what's the official term we'll just say protocol using the get protocol I don't think it's actually protocol I have to look up exactly what it is but this is fine using the get protocol and asynchronously asynchronously we're going to open a connection to the database file using get, there's other ways, there's get and um, there's get and what else? 
post. Yeah, I think there's get and post. There's a couple of other ones. So here's one way. So we're going to use the get <coughs> protocol. Connect to that file. True, asynchronous. Uh, JavaScript, when it runs, everything stops when we get to a line to do a process. Asynchronously means do this, but continue so you can do other things. Do you uh, remember like in old websites years ago, you click something and you're waiting and waiting for everything to happen, then you can finally use the site. Modern websites, you connect to them and stuff can happen in the meantime while you do something else. You're not waiting for everything to load. You can start to use parts of the website before everything loads. Same thing here, we're going to open a connection, but allow true asynchronously that things can, different things can happen at different times. So all of this is to set up the connection. We're going to open a connection. The next line is actually to, to start the connection. Data send, data, dot, uh, data connection dot send. Send the request to connect to get the data. And not send any additional info or parameters or, or yeah, we'll say parameters. So I got I have a null there. Request. So do all of this. We're going to do get this data asynchronously. Send that. Send that request. But uh, don't send anything extra. Just this stuff here that we're saying. This tries to get the connection. Next, deal with a successful connection. Data connection dot onload equals function parentheses curly brace. I'm going to break those curly braces and write and onload. So up at the top, we've created the object that will allow us to connect XML request. Here, we've set up how are we connecting and where are we connecting. Here, we're saying connect dot send. Well, if we've successfully loaded the data, do something with the data. <clears throat> At the very least, to see if this is working, console, if the connection is working, console log, we'll say data connection dot response text. So when we try to send the request to connect, we'll get back response text, the property of that object. This object is storing not only how to connect, but it also stores the data when we connect, when it loads the data. Go ahead and save it and run it in Firefox. Check if there's any errors beforehand. Then press the button and see what see what the feedback is. It'll it should give you the raw data in the JSON file as proof that it connected.
Let me check mine. No error. I click the button. It pops up there. I get this feedback. There's all the raw data. Everything inside of that um, JSON file. It's normal if you see at the very end here, XML parsing error, not well formed. Don't worry about that. Um, I got it. It's fine if you get it. But the important part is I see all the raw data. I press the button. I'm going to refresh this to clean everything. I press the button one time, and all that happened again is it tried to connect to the file. It saw the data. It's putting it all. My function is running. There's all the data. There's the curly braces and the network data and the user data and everything. So it should show that before we make it work better. So let's pause right there. Anyone need a little help? It should show all your data. <coughs> in the console. proof of concept that we're seeing the raw data. We're connecting to that external file, and then we're seeing the data in the console. Now I'm going to comment out that line because I don't need to see that. My console is going to get very cluttered. We'll, make, we'll comment it out and we'll make the note. Display the raw data 
from db.json. So if that worked, I just comment out that line. I don't need to see the raw data. I need to see the data in a usable format. Uh, right now, this document doesn't know that that data is related. It just sees it as numbers and letters and commas and such. It doesn't know it has a meaning. So we need to parse the data. We need to sort of convert the data into a format that it's real objects with real data bundled together and all of that. So next line, I'll say VAR. Um, we'll call this JSON data. Well, not actually. We'll call it. Uh, let's call it. Um, call it OBJ object. Now we'll spell it out. object data. This uh, right here is simply the raw text. It has no meaning. We're about to create a version of it that is an object. A, like a smarter version of the data. So we'll say create an object version of the raw data. So we have a, a JavaScript object and method to convert the raw data into an object. JSON so it's all capital letters, dot parse, parentheses. This method, this command, will take raw data and turn it into a valid JSON object. We're going to store it right here. So the raw data is the exact same thing up here. You can just copy and paste it. That that represents the raw data. I'm going to copy that and paste it into the parentheses. Take that raw data, parse it, convert it into JSON data, store it in here. I'm copying and pasting that. We saw a moment ago it was raw data in the console. Now it should be actual JavaScript data. So next line, console.log object data to see it in this new format. Console.log object data. Now, uh, whoops lowercase object on that. Doesn't matter because we can name these things whatever we want and I'm going back, be careful here, lowercase just to follow everywhere else, lowercase, lowercase, lowercase. It would still have worked with uppercase but just to follow the syntax that we've done over and over and over for the last month and a half, I wasn't thinking. So lowercase object, uppercase data. Save it and run it. Check your console. You should see your data in a slightly different way, in a way that is actual JSON data, in a way that now has meaning. There's this user data plus this user account plus this network. Before it was just numbers and letters and commas and quotes and such. It, it was just text. It had no meaning. Now that we've parsed it, now that we've converted it into an object, well now this object, this data relates to this object. And this data relates to that. So checking <coughs> the results here, running it, I get an object. Again, just ignore this error here. You're still going to get it. Don't worry about it. Now we have an object. When I open that, I have network data. I have user data. When I open network, I have the zero with object, YouTube have the first object, Vine, 
have the second object, Twitter. I have in total three objects of data in the network field. In users, same thing. I have four items of users. Now these things have meaning. Before it was just raw data. And now it says you've got four. The length of this data is four. You've got four things starting from zero. The zeroth one is Victor, and the first is Janet, and then Luke, and then Maria. Four separate objects in the users field, and all of this is now real data instead of raw letters and numbers. You can further open these, and then it shows you again that way. Well, the age, the email, the name. And don't worry about this proto stuff. We've got all of this. Networks is all of the data. It's seeing that you've got a field. It, alphabet, it, it alphabetized it. We wrote name first, then description. Well, it just simply alphabetized it. Now, if that's displaying all of the raw data, we can also do this. Next line, console log object data dot users brackets zero dot name. But this one is show all of the data in object format. Show the first show the name of the first user the first person of the user table. So all of the data dot in the users table, the zero width user starting from right zero, one, two, three, there's four users, zero, one, two, three. The zero with user dot name. Give me the name field of the first um, entry in the users table in my data. Save it and run it. Click the button, and the console should tell you Victor. It shows you the name of the first object, the zero with position, <coughs> the zero with position of the array, the zero with index. If I wanted the age of the second person, that's right. First of all, object data dot users one because it's zero, then one, then the field dot age. Okay, well, I'm showing information about users. I have a whole table of networks. I want to display uh, the web address of the uh, third social network. Console log object data dot, what do we call this thing again? Networks plural, networks, the third one, zero, one, two. two, yep, the dot web address, URL. So the URL field of the third position in the networks
table of the data I got from the database. Go ahead and save and run that just to kind of see that. So I call this object data because it's it's now an object. It's data related to each other, grouped together. We are looking at it in, and we're dealing with it in a smart way. Back up here where it was simply response text, it was just dumb ta dumb data, dumb text. It didn't have any meaning. It was just a bunch of letters and numbers. But once we then ran JSON or used the parse um, method, we turned it into a JSON object. And now we're able to do this. Go to this field in this position of this table, and we pulled specific specific data. So when I pick, I get the whole <coughs> chunk of data. But then I get I ask for the name of the zeroth user. I get the age of user three, and then I get the web address of uh, social network number three, position two. OK, so um, over at, again, if you're going to connect to the Twitter database, it's going to give you back this raw data, and then you can um, navigate this data if you know how it's set up. You'll be able to see the raw data like uh, like something like this. And once you understand how it's set up, you'll understand the different positions and all of that, and the and the fields. Well, this is going to the console. What I want is um, <coughs> to display it on screen. We've got this. Um, well, actually, you know, uh, what's the expression? Time flies when you're having fun. It's already 9.25. <laughs> Yes, one moment. So we're having so much fun coding here. Let's end the lecture at this point and then do the final part of uh, actually displaying on screen on Thursday, where we don't have to rush. If at the very least it's working here that you're seeing some console output as expected, very good. If not, we'll do a little lab time. I'll put my code in the network folder in a moment. When we come back, OK, I kind of see that I'm looking at the data. Well. Next lines, we're going to display it on screen. We're going to write the name of the network. We're going to display the picture. We're going to make the link, etc. We'll do that first thing on Thursday. Um, once we get our heads wrapped around this sort of like simple activity, then we'll go back to Visual Studio, where we will then start to apply this back on our on our on our app project. Because what we're learning here will be very much what we might do when we get back to Visual Studio. We're going to connect to the database, retrieve the data, display the data, and all of that stuff. So um, let me put this code into the network folder, and we'll have a little lab time.